<laughs> Hello, my name is Serena Reynolds. Were you like me in school and packed a lunch every day to avoid the gross looking food? Has the push for stricter regulations on school lunch actually made things worse? Today I'm going to tell you about the benefits of a healthy organic school lunch. I'm credible to tell you about this because I took a course my last semester of college that told us about the horrors of fast food, school lunches, and I've done a lot of research on the topic this past week. So, to help learning and development in schools, we need to push for organic, healthier, and better prepared school lunches. There's been a lot of controversy, controversy over the best way to prepare school lunches. There have been more and more rules about what and how things can be served. Cooks used to be making everything by hand, and now it's come down to just defrosting and reheating prepackaged, smaller and smaller proportions. Many school lunch lunches are now bland, and kids refuse to eat them, and I've seen a lot of food go straight from the tray to the trash. I've seen personally how much school lunches have changed during my 12 years at school. So, my friends and I used to joke about how prison food was a lot like school food, but actually, according to what's healthier, prison food or school lunches, there really is a lot of similarities in calories and in costs, but prison food, or prisoners have more options for healthy, organic, and tasty food items than school children do. But some Iowans are trying to do something about it. According to an article by Jordan E, parents have been pushing for more parents push for more organic school lunches. There was a petition signed by over 300 parents saying that they wanted organic local food put into their children's lunches. But this was an issue because 54% of the students in this school didn't pay, couldn't pay for their school lunches. And a lot of schools have problems like this. And this is called a food desert, which means a place that lacks fresh fruit, veggies, grains, and it is usually due to a lack of money or access to these items. Food deserts create a trap for poorer areas that don't have, um, <coughs> that don't have these health, healthy options, which can make it easier for food chains like fast food to move in and creates a rise in obesity. Some of the difficulty for, that schools face when they're going organic are the price, the added price of healthier foods, the kids on free and reduced lunches, accessibility, spoilage, and the growing seasons of these fresh foods in certain areas. According to an article by Fisher, while new restrictions on diet and calories may benefit a group of students who struggle with making good dietary choices, there, it does not suit the needs of all students. But if this movement can gain enough support, these obstacles can be overcome and at minimal cost. There are also new standards for food that have cost schools over $3 billion, and 50% of these new healthier food items usually end up in the trash. But to keep calories low, you don't actually have to sacrifice flavor. In a book I read for my college class called Chew on This, they told the story of a woman named Alice Waters, who was a picky eater growing up. She went to school in Berkeley and then spent a year in France where she studied food culture. She realized that food is more than just food. It creates community and interactions, which is especially important in school-aged children. When she moved back to the States, she noticed Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School on her daily commute to work. She realized once she entered the school that the kitchen was closed, actually, and the food had been left, in, left rotting in the ovens for years. And the kitchen was filthy, and the lunch for these over 500 Could children was actually served just, from a tiny snack shack on the playground. Is she? So she decided she needed to make a change. The kitchen was clean, and they actually planted an organic garden on the playground, which included free-range chickens, and all sorts of fruits and vegetables. Classes began to be held outdoors. The science classes would study the worms in the gardens and things like that. The kids got to work in the garden and in the kitchen, which helped them learn responsibility. And the kids were happy and healthy and involved, and they got to learn how to make balanced diets themselves. 
So Alice Waters helped prove that it is possible to make healthier lunches without losing taste or money. Since recent changes in re regulations have been implemented, many school lunches have been running at a loss because fewer kids are buying and eating their lunches, and lots of the food just ends up straight in the trash. In conclusion, we need to be making, yes, we do need to be moving towards healthier eating habits in our schools and as a nation, but we can't overlook the dietary needs and preferences of the school-aged children. Healthy, affordable options should be available to all people, especially in schools. I believe providing, the op providing these options will have better outcomes for students than current efforts. Give kids quality food and they will be more excited to eat. Also, if schools began buying more organic and locally grown food, it will help boost local economy and create a greater sense of community. So we need to be doing better and push for greater quality and higher standards, but also more local and organic foods and strive towards the goals that Alice Waters showed that we can achieve. After all, school lunches are the may be the only meal that some of these students have. So with some support from the public and lawmakers, we can make a change toward healthy, organic, cost-efficient foods that will be greater for everyone overall. Thank you.